Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Laura Kalela. She's a fitness and nutrition expert. Laura, welcome to the show. Hi, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited to have you on the show because selfishly, I would probably be your one of your worst clients, but I know I need to do something about it. And I know a lot of people are in the exact same boat as me. So I'm very excited to have you on the show today. Um, but maybe before we get into all that stuff, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I grew up in Chicago, uh, a suburb okay. called Glen Ellen outside of the city. Okay, interesting. So you went to university. What did you take and why? Yeah, you know, I was always interested in people um, okay. and kind of what makes people tick and why people do the things they do. And um, I was always also an athlete. So okay. um, when I was going to college, I was very interested in psychology. Okay. And they didn't really have, I went to the University of South Florida, and um, they didn't have kind of like a wellness or exercise science degree. So I took psychology with a lot of um, classes in like fitness and sports psychology. And um, I was always into that. So that, that was kind of like the next natural degree that I could get at that time. Okay. Interesting. And then after, yeah, I, I, after that, I went on a little bit further, but at that time, um, that was, that was a, a pretty good one for, for what I was doing. I was, um, doing a lot of personal training on my own. Um, but I was so interested in working with athletes and how they became athletes. And so the psychology really helped at that time. Interesting. So, the thing that always kind of fascinates me about the whole space is something you kind of mentioned to me before we started kind of recording is the the divide between how much time you should actually spend kind of at the gym actually doing stuff compared to how much you should just consider your diet and, and health. Do you want to kind of walk us through that a little bit? Absolutely, Kevin. And I think that, you know, when I laughed when you kind of said to me that you're my worst client, because I think that you would you'd be surprised that a lot of people say that as their very first kind of introduction when we're meeting. Okay. And I think that, that people get very confused with how much information is actually out there. And, you know, back when I was running and track and cross country, I mean, we would do these two, three hour workouts. Okay. Um, you know, with weights, with running, and those days are really over. Um, I don't know if you've heard of um, high intensity interval training. Yeah. Um, yep. Have you? Yeah. Okay. So, so, and there's also another form of training, training called Tabata, and these two types of styles of of working out have really changed the fitness industry over the last, I'm going to say, probably five to eight years. And gone are those days where you're an hour on the treadmill and, you know, followed up by 45 minutes of weights. I mean, those days are really gone. And, um, the program that I teach at matrix is, um, it's a 40 minute program, 35 to 40 when all done and said stretching and everything. And besides that kind of working out, which I say you do five days a week, 35 to minute, 40 minute workouts, and really 80% of it is annoying. It is, it sounds 80% of it is what you eat. It truly is. So, so, you know, it, it's great that people work out. I think working out is sort of your icing on the cake, um, not to mention it's so, so it's heart healthy. We hear that all the time, but it really is true. Um, and, you know, we lose our muscle. Um, you know, we lose muscle every single year as we age. So working out is super important, but that, that diet is, you know, number one. Very cool. Okay. So I do want to dive a bit deeper into that, but I also want to cover your background a little bit because you've done a ton of stuff. So do you want to kind of walk us through your career up until what you're doing at Matrix now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as a kid, I was always that kid that was um, the runner. I, okay. My brother was a runner. I was a runner. Very much into into fitness. I don't know why. It just kind of was innate in me. 
Um, and when I got to high school and I started learning about nutrition, I just thought like, this is so cool, but can you really do this as a job? Okay. Um, and you know, found out that you could. Um, so had a personal training background, um, and went into, um, right out of college, I had my own personal training business for a few years and kind of quickly learned that, you know, as much as I loved personal training, I didn't, I wasn't making the kind of income that I wanted to make. Gotcha. Um, and I enjoyed selling the training packages. So I, I got into sales and, and I still remained in the fitness and nutrition industry. Um, I worked through different health club um, positions from, you know, fitness manager to personal training manager, spent some time with Equinox. Um, and even at one point was a general manager of a health club. So I really spent a lot of time in that kind of health club environment, learning how to sell to various people. Um, and then from there, I went to Polar. They do the heart rate watches for athletes. Uh, and um, right. it was just fun. It was such a fun job. Traveled the United States and working with <clears throat> you know, health clubs and the, the big clubs, the small clubs, and really teaching people about the importance of heart rate training. Interesting. Um, and that was so fun. And did that for about four years. And then um, all along, for about the last nine years, I've been doing my own nutrition uh, business on the side. So really teaching people how to eat, what to eat, um, lifestyle changes. And in about 2012, I was starting to get people who just had more health issues. Somebody that would have like diabetes or someone who was taking high blood pressure medication. And to be totally honest with you, Kevin, it made me nervous. Um, okay. I didn't know like the science. And so I could tell people what to eat. But then if they said, oh, you know, I'm taking hydrochlorothiazide for high blood pressure, I would kind of freeze and be uh, like, okay, like I, I don't know if I should tell you to take this or not do this. And so I decided to go back to school um, and I got my master's degree in functional medicine and clinical nutrition. Okay, very um, cool. And I laugh about that because people are like, okay, well, what is that? It sounds really important, <laughs> but what is it? And um, I always tell people, it's kind, I'm, I'm the liaison between a medical doctor and a naturopath. And so okay, some people, yeah, it, it's a pretty cool, different kind of degree. So some people will go to their MD and the MD will say, you know what, Kevin, you have to lose 40 pounds and, you know, you really need to eat better. And you might say, okay, well, I don't want to take this medication anymore. What else can I do? And at that point, a doctor kind of freezes and says, okay, just like when I would freeze when I didn't know the medical terms, they kind of freeze and they don't know the nutrition. So I'm sort of that in between to help somebody, you know, A, lose the weight, um, gain some better nutrition, maybe some energy, and then transition out of taking regular pharmaceuticals and, and get into the world of whole food and supplements. So, um, and, and with that, I've been able to kind of take it from individuals to corporations, too. So it's kind of a specific degree, but um, it has a lot of general use. And that led me to now. Okay. Yeah. No, I interesting. I, I didn't tell you this before we, we started recording, but I, I think one of the best things, like I, I'm celiac, and I found out almost a decade ago or, or just under that, and it was uh -huh. interesting when the doctor kind of told me, well, my dad found out and he, he, the doctor was like, go get your kids should go get tested. And we found out. But the point I'm trying to make is almost what you just said is they sent me to a nutritionist to say, okay, based on what your body type is and can eat, here's things that you should be kind of eating. And, and that I think at the core is what I think a lot of people struggle with and what I struggle with sometimes is I don't really know what to do or where to start because some of these trendy diets or, or exercise things seem cool and a bunch of people kind of jump on the bandwagon and then they jump off. But I, at least in my opinion, want to know, you know, what I can eat because of my health issues or um, just the type of lifestyle I lead. And then what I need to do kind of at the gym, right? So, or maybe at home right. because I don't want to go to the gym because it's uncomfortable and I'm openly, I hate going it. It makes me so uncomfortable. So, right. So I think to your point, I, I'm almost that perfect person for, for you because you will work with somebody like me to say, okay, you have this issue. Obviously you can't eat bread. I have to eat gluten-free bread, right? Right, right. 
And I, I think with what you just said, I think a lot of people, celiac especially or gluten intolerant, I mean, I, I thought it was kind of exactly what you said. It was a little bit trendy. And, you know, I, I almost thought being down in Los Angeles, like it was almost people thought it was sort of cool to, to be gluten intolerant. And so you'd hear it left and right in restaurants. And then yeah. when it comes to celiac, there's no, it's not a choice. I mean, no. you, you can't eat that. So I, I think that what kind of sort of spawned me to create this program matrix was exactly what you just said. Like, I don't know what to eat. I don't want to go to the gym. I am uncomfortable to walk in there. I don't have the time. And so the, the, the big thing for me that I started realizing as I was working with one-on-one clients is it it all starts with a mindset and habits. And I think that, you know, for you, it's a little bit easy. I wouldn't say easy, but when you have celiac, it's that's off the table. So you yeah. have less choices. So it's kind of easier to make the, you know, the right choice for you, I would say. Yeah. Um, okay. You have to. Makes sense. So, so, so with anyone, um, if you were to come to me, you know, we start with those tiny habits and, you know, I, before we were recording, you were telling me that, you know, you don't, you don't love to go work out, but you're, you're getting into that phase where you just, you know, you go down to your gym and you work out. And I think the very first thing that I, you know, when we start working with somebody is like kind of evaluate your day okay. and where do you have 35, 40 minutes? Um, if it's at the beginning of the day, you know, you schedule that. If it's the end of the day, you schedule it. If it's the middle of the day, you schedule it. And that's just the first, you know, they say it takes 21 days to make or break a habit. And that's my very first word of advice to anyone out there who doesn't want to work out, but knows that they should is to find, find that 35 minutes, of uninterrupted time where you can do it. So that's kind of step one is make that your habit. And um, so almost like, you know, you, we get hungry around lunchtime, you know, you're going to eat. If that's also the same time you can work out, make it that habit. So you either go get your 35 minutes in and you, then you eat. So that's always my kind of step one. Okay. And then once we can get people into that sort of mindset that this, this has to happen, I make, um, you know, the, the, my program is so easier and there's so many programs. It's not just my program. I mean, really, there's so many programs out there these days where there's a quick system, get your 35 minute workout in, and here's exactly what you do during those 35 minutes. And then let's get into the food and nutrition a little bit. Um, I think the easiest thing for people to just sort of focus on is whenever you go to grab something, you, you, you get in that kind of that mindset of, is this a whole food? Um, uh, okay. so, you know, a cookie, it's, it, it didn't just come out of the ground that way. <laughs> um, so, you sure. know, cookies, not, a, not a whole food. Um, a power bar is not a whole food. Uh, um, you know, so you get the idea of eat as many whole foods as you can, um, okay. fill your, your, let's say you have a basket every day to fill with everything you're going to eat. When you look in that basket, how much of the content is whole food? Uh, um, and not the grocery store, but um, yeah, I got you. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. so you start there. And then from there, you know, you got to build it out. So it, I just build out each meal. So if I'm going to start my whole foods, I know that I'm going to have, um, let's say that I'm going to have a peach, you know, it's kind of stacking. What am I, what else can I eat with that peach? You know, um, does it make sense to have, am I somebody who can eat dairy? If not, maybe a cottage cheese and a peach would be something good to eat as a snack. Gotcha. Um, and I just build it out from, from, you know, I pick my one thing and build out a meal around it. Um, and I try to keep it super simple. I, I think that, uh, you know, I've talked about this so many times is it, you go to the internet and you're like, great, there's this thing called ketogenic and then there's intermittent fasting and then there's vegetarian and then there's yeah. vegan and then there's the Mediterranean diet. And it's just so confusing. Um, but you know, there's, there's good things about every food program. Sure. And, and that's where um, I try to teach people is, you know, wh- what, do, how do you like to eat? What foods do you like? And then let's build your, your daily basket around the foods you like. Now, if, if you said, Hey, Laura, I like pizza and hot dogs and cheeseburgers. Then I say, <laughs> okay, maybe we got to curb, cheat day, curb cheat your day. favorite foods, but yeah, <laughs> cheat day. Exactly. <laughs> okay. No, that's, no, it, that makes total sense. But I, I'm curious to dive a little bit deeper into these matrix programs that you're you're creating. Do you want to kind of walk us through that? And I, I guess maybe before you answer that, 
do people sure. have to do you come to people physically can you do this over the internet or or how do you actually work with people yeah very very good question um i work with people over the internet okay. i do go to people in the, the los angeles area gotcha. um you know southern california i would say um and I can also do Skype. Um, sure. I can do FaceTime. So, you know, the, the internet has turned into the best way to work together with people face to face. Um, when it comes to teams or small groups, um, even if they're out of state, I actually love to fly in for, if we're going to do like a, a lunch and learn program, those are really fun. And then sure. we stay in touch through email, phone or Skype. So, um, to answer it simply, I can do all of, all of those. That Got you asked. You. Um, and, um, you know, I'll dive into to Matrix a little bit. My sure. my favorite program um, and how I kind of came up with this was I call it the Matrix 8, and the okay. 8 stands for eight weeks. Um, uh. Because, yeah, because, you know, there's, there's some programs out there, um, and they're like these elimination programs where you're not eating sugar, you're not eating alcohol, you're not eating bread, yeah. pasta, grains, um, some fruits. And so you're really left going like, well, what can I eat? Yeah. Um, well, and, you and can't you even like go out, of- right. Or enjoy things no. for a, no. like however long yeah. the program is. And it just, that sounds maybe a lack of a better term for it. That sounds just crazy to me because that's something for me at least. And I think a lot of people, you're basically setting up people to fail, right? Is that fair to say? You, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say exactly <laughs> Sorry. that right. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, you really are. And I've had so many people come to me and say, like, I did this for 30 days and I was miserable and I didn't go out of my house. And then I stopped after day 31 and I w- went back to exactly how I was. So what kind of excited me and, and gave me this idea for this, the, the Matrix 8 is... You know, 60 days is not that long. I mean, summer's longer than, than sure. 60 days. And so th- w- with the 60 days, it's a lifestyle change. So, yeah. I mean, people say like, oh, can I have a glass of wine? Yeah, absolutely. Can I have chocolate cake? Sure. You know, can sure. I have um, a cheeseburger? Yep, you can. Um, but what it is, is it's taking those 60 days, starting with kind of that. So the 60 days is the ideal program. Some people say, you know what, I'm going to get my feet wet a little bit and I'm going to do the four weeks. But I always tell people, totally fine. Get to that third week and decide on the rest of the program. But the eight weeks, that's when you're really going to see the changes. You're going to feel the changes, and people are going to see the changes in you. So, Well, you're halfway there, right? Why would you throw in the towel? Right. (laughs) Yeah, and I think that sometimes people say, well, okay, well, you know, the holidays are coming, so I can do this from now until now. Um, But then as soon as the holidays are coming, I'm going to go back to the way I was. And I think that's step one is, you're never going to go back to the way you were because you're going to feel good and you're going to enjoy it along the way. So this isn't like a diet. It's a total lifestyle program. So, you know, the first, the first week, you know, we're, we're figuring out like what you like to eat, what you can eat. Are you vegetarian or you're not? And we go through all the different types of eating. Um, Then we, you know, lock you into one of the styles of eating. So if you're a vegetarian, there's a vegetarian program with recipes for the entire 60 days. Uh Um, There's, suggestions for cheat meals there's suggestions for just a cheat snack or whatever it is there's suggestions for all of that if you're gonna say um on wednesday i'm taking my wife out and i know we're gonna have a couple drinks um we incorporate that into the day so that's when i say like lifestyle is you incorporate your life into this style (laughs) that's why i call it lifestyle so so you work your life around this and this works its life around you so you know, five days out of that, that week, there's a 35 to 40 minute workout that you can do at home with just jump rope, um, weights, one set of weights, jump rope and on um, bands. Um, okay. you can also do it with just body weight. If, if you're somebody that's just starting out and isn't at that level, it's no problem. So you've got, uh, five different workouts for that week. Um, and then the last part that I added to it, and I think that this is you know, I've, I've found that some people are very into it and some people are like, ah, I'll try it out. But I added, um, meditation and breath work. Um, and it's, it's, I say meditation and or breath, breath work. Cause some people are like, well, what is breath work? Yeah. Um, and I have an expert, um, on my, my team and she teaches people what that is. And it's just kind of a way to release kind of that inner stress, anxiety, and tension. Um, and if that's too advanced for people, like we just do little meditation and the little meditation is just kind of resetting your, 
your day, your week, your month, um, to get you in kind of a headspace of just being overall healthy minded. Um, and I didn't actually kind of come up with that until the end because I was thinking, well, what else to me is important? And um, when I wasn't doing meditation, I was kind of scattered in type A and on the move. And um, I think what's great about meditation is it just slows you down and gets you back to this point where you have a reset. So really the, the foundation of the program is diet. Um, well, I'll take the word diet out, is food <laughs> changes, um, nutrition and fitness, and then a little bit of lifestyle um, mindset work. Interesting. And that's the six days. Okay, interesting. So for somebody that, like myself, that knows they should probably do more of this, how do you motivate people to keep going? Because I think that's, it's so easy to make up an excuse to say, not going to do it today. <laughs> Right. right. Yep. No, I mean, I, 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 like I said, I didn't want to go to yoga today, sure. but you know, as I finished up, I, I felt great about it. But I think what, what I have found um, the, to be the most motivating with these type of programs is um, kind of locking into a group of people who are also doing it. So, you. you know, a Facebook group, um, holding people accountable. I always encourage, so, you know, say that a corporation invited me in there and to do this program and there's, 300 people, but 60 people are going, going to do it. Um, you know, they, they put the little competition on their self or, you know, those 60 people are kind of eating together during, during those 60 days. Gotcha. Um, so I always say find a partner or a group of people that you can connect to. And there's so much of a community um, in our Facebook groups too, that, um, you know, right now we just have a Facebook group, but what we'll be doing probably after the first of the year, because we're going into that window um, I call it the excuse window. Okay, We're going sure. into that time frame now where the holidays are coming. And, right. you know, I get it. Even I'm that way. Everyone says, you know, well, I'll do it after the holidays. So after the first of the year, we'll have um, individual groups where when we launch a program, you know, it'll be these set 60 days. Um, you're locked in with this group. So um, to simply answer your question is to either have one or more people that you do this together with for, for kind of a group accountability program. And fun. No, that makes sense. And and that's helped me um, kind of get more involved in, in kind of doing my like working out, right? I, I think just be feeling accountable to somebody else, you don't want to let them down, right? Or, or a group of people or your coworkers or, right? Like it, it's, it's hard if everybody's yeah. going for a walk at lunch, and you're just like at your desk eating chips or something, right? You kind of feel guilty. <laughs> I think I, I think a lot of people right. would anyway. <laughs> totally. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, you know, I think the best part about the group is when people start seeing results together. Um, yeah. I did a, a 40 day challenge with some people last year and there was supposed to be one winner. Um, there were 40 people that did this 40 day challenge and we ended up having four winners because yeah. we did the, at the end, we did this kind of group vote and everyone said like, I, I mean, people would say like, I can't believe how different this person looks or their demeanor or their, that you can tell their energy in, in just 40 days. So um, it works. I mean, holding someone accountable really works. Sure. No, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. But you mentioned something to me that I didn't really realize was, was a thing about actually getting a bunch of stuff actually delivered to your house so you can kind of get a baseline of where you're at in the fitness space. Is, could you want to maybe talk a bit about yeah. that and what exactly that is? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I think that the word biomarker, have you heard of that word? Um, no, I haven't all? actually. Okay. It, it's getting thrown around more and more, um, especially on the internet. Um, okay. And a biomarker is just a measurement. Um, um, so it could be like uh, a measurement such as where your, where your mineral count is right now or your uh, white blood cell okay. count or, um, you know, any of those vitamin D, vitamin A, those are, those are your bi uh, biomarkers. And um, they can come through blood, saliva, or urine. Okay. And nowadays, it is just so easy. And people say to me, like, right off the bat, you know, I don't want to go get blood work. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, it's, I don't want to go to the doctor's office. I don't want to take time off of work. I don't want to sit there. I don't want to wait for the lab results. And I get that. But now it is so easy to get your baseline measurements um, with a kit that comes right to your door. So there's so many different companies um, out there right now. And I work with a couple of them where, you know, you order the test, it comes to your house the next day. It could just be a simple saliva test. 
okay. um, or uh, literally a cotton swab. It goes back to the company um, and it comes to your email and it'll say like, here's where your current metabolism is. So I encourage everyone um, to ad- at least do a lipid panel and a metabolism panel, um, which is, you know, thyroid and cortisol and um, your, your lipid panel is going to be your cholesterol and, and uh, your uh, LDL and your HDL cholesterol and where you're at. But I always tell people anytime they're going to do any kind of lifestyle program or food change, find out where your baseline is. Sure. And once you f- have on your baseline, now you have something to go off of. So if you did all this work and you felt better and your clothes fit a little bit differently, but the scale didn't change, but you did your biomarker testing at you know day one and you did it at day 65 and you had drastic results, you would talk about it. And you would also, you know, knowing that, would you go a little bit further and say, you know what, I'm going to do this for 90 days and then I'm going to test my, my levels again. And I think, you know, prevention is such a big thing nowadays and it's not difficult to, you know, order these tests. They're not expensive. You get them right to your door, you send them out, you get them in your email. And it just took all the the reasons why people don't want to do this, um, even is I don't want a needle. Great. You know, you don't have to do it that way anymore. So um, I use these, these tests all the time and I think they're a great baseline. And um, one thing I do want to follow up from, from the testing of this is just like there's these tests, there's also a lot of food companies now that will deliver really great organic um, meals that are totally counted as they should be calories and macronutrients and micronutrients right to your door. So um, with these, all of these kind of programs, it's as easy as can be um, just depending on what your budget is and, and how far you want to take it. So um, ease is, is the name of the game. Interesting. Thanks for listening to building the future. This show is heard by more than a million people monthly in over 15 markets worldwide, including Silicon Valley. Kevin Horick's guests are leading business owners, successful entrepreneurs, and merchandisers worldwide. Now, your brand has an opportunity to tap into this dedicated and active group of business people who are looking for places to invest and the right opportunities to support. Find out how you can get involved at buildingthefutureshow.com. So, uh, sorry, you mentioned something that I want some clarification on. You can take your blood at home without sticking a needle in your arm. Is that what you mentioned? You can, you yeah, you can do a. It's called a finger prick. Um, oh, okay, and okay. it's called dried dried blood testing. So you, there's three different ways to to get your your biomarker. So you can do. Um, there's telemedicine people that will come right to your house and draw blood. If gotcha. you had a test where there are a lot of measurements, you can do a finger prick that comes right in the mail with the test. Gotcha. Um, and that just uses one drop of blood. Or you can do saliva. Okay. Most people, um, as you can imagine, lean towards the saliva. Sure. Um, there are certain tests, um, like the lipids, you do have to do um, at least a finger prick for those. But okay. uh, there's a lot of tests if people are really like, I'm really not into needles. There's a lot of tests that you can do just with saliva. Okay. No, that's kind of what I wanted clarification on because I think a lot of people fear needles, I, my, myself included. So, <laughs> um, but, but I'm curious to dive a little bit deeper into your thoughts on so many people just weigh themselves. And I, I think you kind of just alluded to this a second ago, that if they don't see five pounds, 10 pounds gone after a certain period of time, they just give up. But to your point, if you can take a baseline and then 60 days or 30 days, you can see results based on your your different, what whatever's happening in your body, that's success, right? But if you never did the baseline and you obviously wouldn't do the second round 30 or 60 days later and you don't see results and the scale basically hasn't really moved that much, you give up. But what are your thoughts on kind of the scale, right? Because it, it seems a little bit archaic to me. Yeah. It's such a good question. Um, you know, the scale is, it is archaic for so many reasons. I mean, first of all, we can gain and lose, especially a female, um, like two to three pounds. Guys, it could be up to five pounds a day. So, that, you know, if you wow. weigh yourself in the morning, it's it's water weight. And if you uh, weigh yourself in the morning versus the evening, or if you had a workout that day, or if you didn't have a workout, or if you ate salty food, any of these type of um, just daily behaviors can, can add or take away 
from that scale. And, you know, I know myself, um, you know, if I, if I have a certain number in my mind and I go to the scale and I'm more like out, I actually feel kind of bummed out that day or what did I do wrong that day? And so, um, you know, we all, as we're getting into these programs and people are working out, you know, you are putting on muscle or changing your muscle. And I always tell people that muscle weighs more than fat. And so let's say that you're 60 days into this program and you go back on that scale and at day 60, you actually weigh more than you weighed on day one. Um, you know, if you really get locked into that number of a scale, you're really, it's, it's really going to be disappointing. So there's other ways to, to measure along with, with your biomarkers. Um, you know, I have people who are really, really um, conscious about kind of losing inches. They'll use, you know, the, the soft um, uh, fabric tape measures and right. they'll measure their waist and their hips. And there's just, there's a lot more um, advanced technology nowadays than, than just jumping on that scale. So um, this, I do say, you know, a scale is good, as a baseline, but it's not something that you should do every day. And, and when you do weigh yourself, weigh yourself at the same time of day. Um, and it, you know, always before you work out and so things like that. But, um, I couldn't agree with you more that the, the scale is a little bit archaic now. Sure. No, interesting. I, I've always just kind of, well, I, I guess the thing that's interesting is if it bugs somebody like you and it can ruin your day who who does this for a living and has been doing this for a long time and went to school for this and is helping others do it somebody like me or other people that aren't in this space that are trying to get better at it they they don't even have a chance then right at, if you're just going off the yeah, scale absolutely. Weight, right you're basically just just throw it out yep absolutely and then if you get to the end of that 60 day and and you're you're 10 pounds less let's say and then you know 20 days later, when you go back to your regular lifestyle, you feel like, wait, was that all for nothing? But these, these changes in your body, I mean, it, it takes a while to gain weight and it takes a while to lose weight. But the, the more you stay with the program, the more you have these lasting results. And I'm at this point now where I don't even, you know, I don't even go on the scale. I, I, people say like, what do you weigh? And I'm like, I don't know, you know, like I'm, and, and if I do start to feel you know, like maybe my clothes are fitting a little bit tighter than I adjust my program for the week or I adjust my eating. But once you get to that kind of maintenance level, um, that's what you can do. You you can make tiny adjustments based off of the week. Um, You just stick with your general lifestyle guideline and and make those adjustments as needed. Interesting. No, I I think that makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious to get your thoughts on, you've talked about what to eat and whatnot, but I think realistically, not everybody can make a super healthy meal every night of the week, or they need to make a meal that their kids will like. Uh, How do you work with people, you know, maybe that are busy, that have kids or a bit of both? Because I I think like, obviously, sometimes people would like to prepare something that maybe takes an hour or 20 minutes, but sometimes they don't have that much time. So how do you work with people like that? Yeah, very, very good question. And I, I think it comes down to a couple of things, like just being cognizant of, of what the extras are. So, you know, let's let's say that, you know, you've got two kids and you, you need to cook something quick and you know that your kids, um, you know, they like chicken fingers um, and french fries. Sure. So, so what are you going to eat? Um, you know, there's different little tricks. So you can make, if you make the french fries yourselves or you, or you cut potatoes and cut them into um, thin strips. You can make almost potato chips with, with a potato. Um, you can make sweet potato French fries yourself. Um, when it comes to something like chicken fingers, instead of frying them or just doing frozen, you can get chicken strips and um, dip them in almond flour and bake them. So there's a lot of variations oh, of how to make something that kids will still eat. And then the other thing, and I, I it was funny, I was just doing this speaking engagement and somebody asked me like what, where the most hidden you know, sugars and salt. And I said, it's, it's in sauces. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. so may, if you can, if you can just quick make those sauces at home, um, you know, I know my, my nephew loves honey mustard and I literally just take a little bit of honey and a little bit of brown mustard and I make honey mustard and it's just so much better. Well, it than, tastes better than, too. <laughs> you know, it, it, he loves it. I, I don't even think he, he would know the difference really, but, Interesting. um, it, it's those little changes. So, I um, see. What about salad dressing? When I say dressing? plan ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, great, great. No, I was going to say when I say plan ahead, it's just 
you, you, it's funny that you said salad dressing. I was about to say, when I say plan ahead, it, it's something like just taking five, really, I mean this, five extra minutes and okay. making whatever it is. So like you said, salad dressing, I mean, you can make salad dressings um, that are better than, than the store-bought ones. You can make them in five minutes. So, you know, people say to me, well, how do I make this? How do I make that? Um, I will give you the exact recipe, the exact <laughs> ingredients. And I will actually say it'll take less than five minutes. So um, when I say plan ahead, it, it might be plan ahead one time for something that you're going to use 10 times. Right. Um, so that's, that's as far ahead as you're planning. It's not, um, I've got to plan every single thing for every single meal, you know, that I'm going to eat this week. Um, it, it doesn't really have to be like that. It can be, you know, once you figure out what you're going to eat the, the night before, figure out what those ingredients are that you have already in your house, figure out the whole foods. And then when it comes to dressing, just make them as basic as you can. Um, and that will keep you away from, from the weight gain. Cause it's those hidden sugars that, that kind of keep adding up and adding up. Sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, and I think a lot of people go shopping maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks and buy enough stuff for the week or two, right. And kind of meal plan a little yeah. bit. Um, just because yeah. I think a lot of people can't go to the grocery store every day or every second day. It, have you sure. experienced that or, or what are your thoughts on that? I, I actually, um, like to go, like you said, once a week, um, for the basics. And then I will drop in, you know, like maybe on a Wednesday in the middle okay. of the week for some, some lean meats or fish, something like that. Um, but for the most part, I, I try to, plan out the entire week. Um, I know when I'm meeting friends and I know when I'm going to go out to dinner. Um, but yeah, you're totally right about, about once a week. And if you have to pick up a few fresh items here and there, like I usually just say add it in the middle of the week. Um, you know, if you can run there during lunch, put them in the fridge at work. I mean, those are, that's the easiest way, but when it comes to kind of planning those meals, um, if you can cut out a lot of the prep work with these dressings and sauces and have those all prepared, um, you'll, you'll save yourself a lot of time. And most of the meals, um, most, if not all of the meals in, in the program are, um, you know, something that will take maybe 10 minutes to prepare and depending on if it's something that it has to cook, you know, maybe 30 minutes. Um, so it's not the, not too big elaborate meals, anything like that. No, that makes a lot of sense. And so how do you work with people that are maybe in sales or, or something where they're constantly out and about going to different restaurants, maybe even going to events later in the night where you know, maybe they're going for dinner and drinks, maybe a couple of nights a week? Like, how do you work with people like that? Because obviously there's a lot of calories in alcohol and alcohol and eating out all the time is probably not the best thing. How do you work with people like that? And what advice do you give people like that? Yeah, um, it's such a good question. I, I was one of those people for, for so many years in, okay. in some of the sales jobs that I had. And um, you know, even when I worked for Polar, you know, we're, we're selling something healthy, but we had a lot of lunches and dinners. Right. And um, so, so when it comes to alcohol, I, I kind of stick with the, with the same guideline is, you know, go for those clear alcohols, you know, vodka, white tequila, stuff like that. Um, beer, I know so many people just love having a beer. Sure. Um, I... I just, I, as much as I don't want to be the Debbie Downer, I think just beer, beer is the one that it really is just full of calories. Um, so if you're going to go to an event and you are going to have a beer, order a light beer, um, as light as you can, or like I said before, if you're going to order a heavier beer, um, kind of pick and choose. If you can use the beer for your calories at that meal, then maybe eat a salad with some lean protein, um, is your dinner. So, when you're at a restaurant or you're at an event, um, just order things, sauce on the side um, as much as you can. Uh, whole foods, stick away from the pastas and the extra breads. Um, and I think, you know, it, it just comes down to like mindful eating. Okay. Um, if you're going to, if, if you're out and you have a sales event and, you know, you're sitting with the, the VP of the table and the CEO and this and that, and you're, you're not going to be the one person who's going to start saying like, I don't want this and I don't want that. And next thing you know, like you're the conversation piece at the table. <laughs> so if you, if you know that that's going to be your evening, plan your day accordingly. Okay. Um, you know, drink a ton of water throughout the day. Um, and if that's going to be, 
a heavy night of eating and drinking for you, then, you know, get a, get a great workout in the next day, get a great workout in the day before. So just bookend the bad day. Interesting. Um, okay. I, I never tell people to change their lifestyle around. I, I mean, like change their whole life around this lifestyle of eating. Um, it's just, you know, small changes, you know, change the day before, change the day after, gotcha. and you're good for that day. Interesting. Where would you put cider in, in that? Because it seems to be a lot more popular lately and a and lot more people seem to like it. Would you put it more closer to the beer side, like try to avoid it or, or what, what's your thoughts? I on would. It? Okay. Yeah, I would. Um, it's a, it's a lot of calories. Um, it's a lot of sugar. Um, sure. so it's definitely kind of on the avoid list. Um, and I don't drink ciders myself, so I, I guess I would have to say I'd have to do a little bit more research on that to even tell you which ones would be the good ones. Okay. Um, but I know they are super popular. Um, I think where people get in trouble with with alcohol is like when it's like you know three four drinks and then sure. you eat something bad too, and then you wake up the next day and you don't feel great, so you miss a workout. So um, yeah, I think it's sort of moderation on, on alcohol. Um, and drinks when you're out socializing. And the other thing that I actually tell people to do, and this works pretty good for me too, is, um, you know, you have a drink, drink a glass, make your next drink a full glass of water, or ice water, and, okay. you know, have that and then maybe have another drink later. So um, I always stack any drinks with ice water in between. Okay, interesting. You, I think you mentioned this earlier, but how many days a week should people try to get in a workout? So ideally in a perfect world, it would be six, um, you know, give your body a full complete day of rest, but, but I mean, five is okay. So, um, even if, if, even if, you know, let's say that you did three workouts during the week and then you did two workouts on the weekend with, you know, maybe a Monday and Thursday off, totally fine. Um, if you want to use one of those day off days off is to go for a nice walk or a hike that's not too strenuous, um, that that's great, but at least five, you know, 35 to 40 minute workouts per week is, is where you really kind of need to, to get to or, or stay at. Um, I myself, sometimes I'll, I really mix it up. So maybe one day I'll go running and the next day I'll do yoga. And then the next day I'll do a boxing class and then I'll take a day off and then, you know, kind of maybe I'll do a weight class. So you can really mix it up so that you're, you know, different, different muscle groups are working and you're not sore every single day. Okay. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And then what advice do you give people that maybe live in a, a colder climate where they have snow and they can't maybe necessarily go running outside or do any activities outside? Um, you know, there's just so much you can do with your own body weight and so much you can do in 35 to 40 minute you know, 40 minutes in front of the TV, um, you know, sure. talking to your family, just sitting there, there's a lot you can do. And nowadays, you know, group exercise class has gotten just, there is a boutique fitness center in every single small town and every single big town within blocks of each other. Um, it's definitely become sort of a more than a fad. It's, it's become this sort of way of life. You walk out the door and there's, there's studios and boutiques all around. So um, there's, some great apps out there that you can sign up for that'll that'll give you all different kinds of workouts and tell you where everything is like within feet from your door. Um, so you can always find a workout if not, you, you know, combine a few different exercises at home and turn it into a, a quick workout. No, I, I think that's, that's actually really good advice. So I, you mentioned this earlier, but I think I want to kind of reiterate a lot of people don't need to go buy crazy gym equipment for their basement, especially when they're starting no, out. Is that fair not. to say? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's so much that you can do with just your own body weight. Um, sure. And I tell people, you know, if you were going to spend really, I mean, it's down to like $20, you know, if you right. could just get one set of weights, maybe like for girls, 10 or 12 pounds um, for guys, 15 or 20, um, okay. you could do a lot with just weights, um, your own body weight, and then a jump rope, um, okay, a jump so rope or band, all super, super inexpensive. Um, if, if you had it like in a perfect, perfect scenario would be, you had one set of weights, a jump rope and some bands. You could okay. every single day, you could get a workout with the, um, those three pieces of equipment and your own body weight, a great workout. 
Interesting. Yeah, because I, I think that's the other problem is so many people will go spend hundreds of dollars on, I don't know, something, and then it just collects dust, right? And then they kind of get angry at it and just get it out of the house eventually, right? Absolutely. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, fair. I think we all have. But we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So let's close with mentioning Warp, where people can get more information about yourself and uh, any other links you want to mention. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can get information about me at uh, matrix.com, which is M-A and then the number eight, T-R-I-X. You can also see me, visit me at Laura Kalea, L-A-U-R-A-C-A-L-L-E-I-A at Gmail. Um, I also have my email, Laura at matrix, M-A-M-A-8-T-R-I-X.com. And then um, I actually give people my cell phone number too, if if they're interested, because um, you know a lot of people just want to talk on the phone about things. So, three one zero nine two seven seven nine four nine. And any of those options are a way that you can get a hold of me. Um, and I also do a lot of speaking events, um, especially coming up after um, Thanksgiving. So um, I'm out and about, and I love to help people and and. Um, teach people things that I've learned along the way. And um, one thing I will add that I didn't tell you at the beginning, um, Kevin, but sure. um, with my genetic testing, um, ironically, I have the highest propensity towards obesity um, of, <laughs> of probably most people. Um, so the average person has about a 59% chance of being obese if they lived a completely sedentary lifestyle and never worked out. And mine is actually 79%, which is very, very high. So um, it would take me, I would have to do, I have to do four times the amount of work that somebody that the typical person would have to do. So um, because I know that this is my genetics, I, um, when I hear people just say like, you know, my entire family's overweight and I totally sympathize. I I am that person, but there's definitely ways to teach yourself to, to not be, that person in your family. So I always add that in there because it's just the most true story that I can ever tell anyone. So, No, I, actually, I, I think that's really good advice because I think it sounds maybe bad, but if you see your your trainer is has the perfect tiny body type and they've never really kind of struggled with it, sometimes it's really hard to get motivated, right? So for yeah, somebody absolutely. like you to openly talk about that you struggle with it personally and you're trying to help other people, I, I think that's very cool. Thank you. And I have so I have before and after pictures that I'm not scared to send to um, even all these years of fitness and nutrition. I've, you know, if I let myself go, I'll, I'll gain weight. So um, this is a way that I live every single day. And it's not, it's just not magic for me. It's not like I was genetically lucky to be, you know, lean and thin. I, um, I live my own talk. So I just wanted to add that in. No, that's, that's really great. Um, well, I really appreciate you taking the time in your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much, Kevin. I've enjoyed talking to you, too, and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.